the, the poet Jay-Z, before he lost his mind in recent years, the poet Jay-Z said, uh, will you be chasing them, I'm replacing them. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? I took that to heart as a young man, and he was a guiding force in yeah. my life, and my dating life all those years. Same, he had another song where he said, <laughs> don't get mad at me, I don't love him, I fuck him. I don't chase him, I duck him. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> the next verse is, I replace him with another I one. I replace him with another one. Yeah, yeah. I don't love him, I, I chase him, I duck him, I replace him with another one. But you got, you got, but if you're not there yet, right? Yo, I'm here with my boy Jake Shields, MMA champion, UFC legend, and my boy Derek Moneybird. Now listen, Derek has helped me make a tremendous amount of money over the years with his business knowledge and his investment knowledge, but I know he's helped you too, Jake, right? Oh, he helped me a lot. I mean, I don't come for money and athletes. So whenever I have a business question, you know, in real estate, I'll hit him up. The stock market, for sure. Any stock advice yeah. I love. I mean, a lot, that's, that's the easiest way to make money. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, entrepreneurship, he knows. Pretty much any question I have, Derek always has an answer, so he's been wonderful for me. Yeah, yeah. All my big financial purchases and investment, I run those through Derek before I make a decision because I know he's got the experience and the knowledge to guide me down the right path. Man, we want to help you too. I, I think of those three topics as like the trinity of wealth. Mm -hmm. If you understand entrepreneurship, you know, you're going to make enough money in entrepreneurship that you're not going to be able to afford to have a job anymore. You're not going to have time to show up to your job if you're making enough money in your business. And if you take that money from your entrepreneurial endeavors, you learn to invest it in real estate or the stock market or the, the two primary investment vehicles that you know, all wealthy people have, have created even more wealth with. If you learn those three things, entrepreneurship, stock market, real estate, it's, again, the trinity of wealth. You're gonna have, it's like a, the Holy Spirit of money is yeah. inside you. <laughs> you're, gonna, yeah. you're, gonna have, you're gonna have the Holy Spirit in your bank account and your brokerage accounts as well. So no, all jokes aside, if you wanna learn more about those three topics, about entrepreneurship, about finance and, and stock market, about real estate and you know, real estate, over 90% of people that have a million dollar net worth made at least some of that money in real estate. That's a fact. If you're not making money in real estate, like, you're probably not making serious money. So if you wanna learn more about entrepreneurship, being re less reliant on a job, mm -hmm. less reliant on a boss, mm -hmm. more capable to make your own decisions, do more of what you want in life, you're gonna to wanna to click that link and join us for a free training. Right, yeah, click the link now, don't miss out. So if, you, if you're having these problems of like, you know, oh, I, I don't, girls don't like me, people don't want to do business with me, blah, 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 it's raise your value. Go work on yourself more. Be smarter, work harder. Derek, how do I build my, how do I have a you know, world-class reputation this week? You don't, it takes years. But if you, if you don't do that early, then it never happens. Never happens, never gonna happen. So I, I think that's very important. Um, and th th any any other little, you know, <sighs> there's other tactical things that, you know, you say, well, you know, you need higher volume of leads. Well, that's fine. You know, Brandon addressed that a little bit uh, earlier. It's like, yeah, you, you run ads, create more leads through ads, but why are you even taking appointments with somebody who's not serious? They're not serious enough to, to come for the phone call? If you had an important problem you needed to solve in your life and you made an appointment with an expert to talk about it, would you show up to the an appointment? Right. Well, the problem is, is that either, the problem is one or two things. Either they don't think you're the person that can help them solve the problem, you know, or they're not very serious about solving the problem at all. So we gotta fix one of those two things. So make sure you're doing everything possible on your side that it's clear to them that you're the person that could help them solve the problem. And then you need a screening mechanism or some filter so you're not wasting your time with people who aren't committed. Does that make sense? Any additional thoughts? You know, I, I, I would echo a lot of the same sentiments you guys said. Uh, you know, I remember there was this girl I was supposed to, I was supposed to hang out with her, right? And she said, uh, she canceled the day of, she said she had to do something with her mom, right? And perhaps it was true, right? You know, moms do be needing shit sometimes. And, uh, I, but I remember thinking, if I was Drake, let's just say I was Drake, <laughs> would she have said that to Drake? Nah, I think she would have, she would have, she would have been like, "Mom, you got to figure that shit out yourself," and her mom would have been like, "Yeah, yeah, go, <laughs> go ahead, man, I'll figure that shit out." You know, so I think like what Derek said about value is super important. Um, that being said, you know, they might not know 
where your value is. So like if you have like a, a super cold lead, like how are you getting these leads? Uh, through cold emails. Oh yeah, so there you go. So they, they might, they like ha- it's difficult to express, to convey your value that way, right? Cause you're, you're reaching out to cold people. So they might not, even if you are like the man, it's like they, they don't know, right? So, but that being said, the, the fact that you have to do that kind of speaks to where you're, where you're at. You get what I'm saying? Like you have to go through such a cold medium. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, you know, the way you, you enter a negotiation or a sales call, the way you enter it is just as important as what happens on it. Sometimes even more important because if you, your, your sales process, you're entering it from a position of weakness, like almost like need, you, you're chasing them, you're kind of chasing them a little bit. And maybe that's just where you're at right now. You know, maybe that's what you got to do until you can build up your value the way Derek said. Um, the, the poet Jay-Z, before he lost his mind in recent years, the poet Jay-Z said, uh, well, you be chasing them. I'm replacing them. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? I took that to heart as a young man, and it was a guiding force in my life and my dating life all those years. Same, he had another song where he said, don't get mad at me, I don't love him, I fuck him. I don't chase him, I duck him. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> Versus I replace him with another one. I replace him with another one. Yeah, yeah. I don't love him, I fuck him, I chase him, I duck him, I replace him with another one. But you got, you got it, but if you're not there yet, right? It's, uh, you're probably just gonna ex- expect a lot of that until you can build your value up the way uh, Derek explained uh, uh, on the onset of this conversation because it's just your sales mechanism, like you're playing a volume game. So there's, there's not a whole lot you can do to mitigate that. Uh, yeah, the way, the, way, the way you're entering that thing, cold emails and then you're chasing them down and then you book a call with them so they're like not super excited. If, if you can find a way to convey that value before you book the call with them, you know, in, in some capacity, I think you'll see better results to convey what they'll, they'll get out of it. Let, let's go back to the philosophic wisdom from the poet Jay-Z. So if I, and correct me if I have this verse wrong, but I, I think you said that that first part exactly right, and I believe I understand what comes after that. So, if I if I recall the that particular poem, he says, "Don't get mad at me. I don't I don't love them. I, f- them. I don't chase them. I duck them. I replace them with another one." Okay, so does it seem to you that you now what is he? He's a billionaire or close to it today? Uh, about three billion right now. Hmm, that's yeah. all. It's not bad. Isn't it? uh, did it, does it seem to you that he had a hard time to you know, procure some financial resources to you know, get a hot date at you know, some point in his life? Or does it seem those words are probably true, that like he's, you know, if he wasn't happy with the situation, replace him with another one? I don't chase him, I duck him. I'll replace him with another one. Yeah. Okay, so... There's, there's a lot of wisdom in that. And I'm, not, I'm not even trying to make a joke at this juncture. There's a lot of wisdom at that. If, like, if, you, if you're chasing after something, like, I don't know, a, that, that gives that person an awful lot of information about you. It, at times in my life where, you know, I was single, I would never chase it after anybody. <laughs> there, there might, if I was busy with business, there might be six women around. If I wasn't so busy, you know, there might be 20 women that if I texted them, they'd be excited to hear from me, happy to meet me. Maybe I have to buy her, buy her a plane ticket if I met her somewhere else and she doesn't live around me. But, you know, at times when I was single, there'd be, it's, and I'm not saying it in a shitty way or a snotty way. It's like there's 20 women that'd be happy to hear from me and show up, happy to see me again. I had a good experience. I was hoping I would call for a period of time. I probably didn't. I'd be happy to hear from me again in the future. And uh, I don't know, man, you know, if you, if you, in any context of your life, you know, uh, the girls that I dated were always, I was very fussy, I was very reluctant to date somebody. And um, I always had pretty girls that were, you know, listened attentively, were coachable, you know, cooperative, it had to be a goal of, their, of theirs to help me accomplish my goals. They understood that was going to help make their life better too. And if a girl didn't behave that way, if she didn't demonstrate those sort of, you know, values or commitment in a short period of time, 
I replace them with another one. And, you know, and tell them to their faces, like, hey, all a man needs in life is like one good woman or six bad ones. So if you don't want to be that good woman in my life, that's okay. Somebody's going to be happy to do that. And until then, there'll just be six bad ones linger around until the right one comes along and, you know, maybe I'll give her a shot and see how things go. And I don't say that in an arrogant way, that's just truthful. And I, I lived that, my life that way in general, but I did that because, you know, I, I would honestly, and I, I, don't, I mean this with zero disrespect, but, you know, any of my coaches, I would behave the exact same way, that I'm an obedient student. Leoto used that word the other day, so how, you know, but me as a, as a student, he said, Derek is very obedient. You know, ask him to do something, he will do it. If you don't argue, he will do it, you know? It, as a student, I'm gonna show up and do my part. I'd, be, I'd feel humiliated if, you know, one of my coaches came back three months, four months later, and I didn't make significant progress. Like, I'd feel fucking stupid. I don't like to feel stupid. So I'm, I'm gonna make sure that like, I, I, I learned what I learned from them. I'm gonna learn some more shit next week, and next week, and next week, and next week, and put the pieces together and... Prosperity is a lifestyle choice. It's a choice. Bumbling around by yourself in the dark, also a lifestyle choice. Choose wisely. Choose prosperity. Choose to win. Choose to conquer in the new year. Or don't. Somebody got to flip the burgers, man. Someone got to wash the cars, right? And that's cool. Like, you'll still be useful in that regard, but it might not be the ideal outcome you want. If you want to make your next year your best year, this is your last opportunity. Click that link now. Let's go. If you're not going to wash the wheels on my Maybach, click that link. Do yourself <laughs> a favor. We'll see you inside.